And the theme is very important, the balance of God's grace and the law. And uh, uh, I have included more information this time than before. Um, so this is very important, very teach, uh, important teaching because many people, um, they, many people, they just look at, you know, always a lot of people under pressure. There are a lot of people under pressure. They always think of the law, what they have to do. Uh, and so a lot of people grow up under pressure. And, and uh, because basically a society basically is uh, law oriented. That means people have to obey the law and have to do different things. If they don't do the different things, then, uh, then uh, you know, the, the parents or the teachers will say, if you don't do this thing, then, then we're not happy with you then there will be these consequences. So there's always this uh, pressure, motivation for people to change by pressure. So that's uh, motivation by the law. And what happens is, then people a lot of time is under pressure. They under, you know, they, they have to perform, they have to do better. And then when they cannot do well, and then they feel very, uh, they feel pressure and and they're not happy and also they lose motivation after a while because they will say uh, they will say well this is too hard and uh, it's uh, too much pressure but when we're motiv by, what, motivated by grace then it's always saying God is happy with us when, whenever we obey him you know that's what the Bible says even when we give a cup of cold water God is very happy so whatever we do for God then God is very happy at the same time, we take care of, of our sins because sins are destructive. We must understand this, that if we allow sin to stay in our life, then it can bring destruction to our life. And uh, so we take care of our sins and whenever the sinful thoughts appear in my mind, immediately we'll say, well, this is destructive. I'm not going to uh, live in sin. I'm not going to stay in sin. So that is... Uh, uh, awareness of the destructiveness of sin and be willing to change and overcome the sins and that is a biblical uh, balance uh, that that we understand the consequences of sin therefore we don't stay in sins and we live in you know under the grace of God that we're happy all the time because when we praise God we say God is very happy with me and when we obey him he's very happy when we serve him he's very happy uh, because uh, the Bible says so, that even a cup of cold water, he is very happy. So that way, we are motivated by grace. At the same time, we understand the destructiveness of sin. Therefore, we uh, overcome our sins uh, with the help from God immediately when we have any sinful thoughts. When we have any sinful thoughts, immediately we'll say, this is destructive. I'm going to take care of my sins. I'm, I'm going to say no to sins. And that way, then we have victory. Then we have, you know, that when we are about to have anger, we say, well, if I have anger, it's not going to change the person. It's going to uh, actually uh, make him, uh, you know, make him lose motivation. You know, if we, if we yell at people, if we give pressure to people, people will feel discouraged and people would, would you know, feel that uh, they, they have no use. And that lose actually that causes people to lose motivation. So we should all understand the consequences of sin and live under the grace of God and obey God willingly and happily. And that is what the Bible teaches us. That is a balance of, of uh, God's grace and, and the law. Now, if a person just have God's grace without the law, you know, that is called the gospel, uh, grace gospel. They just talk about God's grace. They don't talk about repentance. They don't talk about the, the consequences of sin. And then what happened is people just, they will say, uh, you know, we live in the grace of God. And they will say, it's too much pressure to obey God. Now they, they will say this. It's too much pressure. We cannot obey God totally. But we live in grace. We always, you know, think of God's grace. Then we are 
then we 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 are okay. Then we you know then uh, then God is happy with us. They neglect the passages, the biblical passages that says that God is not happy. God is not pleased with us when we sin. That the Bible has many places that say that, and there is destructiveness of sin. So they neglect the the uh, the the law of the Word of God. The you know the law that is in the Word of God. And uh, and then the other extreme is, you know, only talk about the law. Uh, the grace is only for when you believe in Jesus, then you are forgiven. Uh, uh, without condition when you trust in Jesus as a savior and then now you have to obey and you have to do this and do that read the Bible and pray and obey him and and preach the gospel now all these are right this these are responsibilities that we should uh, fulfill it's it's all biblical the point is the Bible uses many promises to motivate us just like when Jesus said you know that he'll that those who give a cup of cold water will by no means lose the reward. That is the, the grace part, the motivation by His promises. And, and then God is with us when we preach the gospel. He is with us to the end of the world. So those are promises that He is with us. He will give us strength. The Holy Spirit will guide us and the Holy Spirit will teach us. So those are God's grace and God's promises. If we don't have God's grace and just have the law, what happens is then people will, you know, they will uh, just always under pressure. They're always living under pressure. They always, uh, they, they find it difficult to obey God. They, they find it difficult because it's under pressure, because there's always accusation and say, you haven't done uh, enough. You have not done well enough. You know, a lot of times it's like this. You know, you look at if uh, I, I use this illustration now if someone has improved a little bit for instance even a child when he has improved in his schoolwork sometimes the parents will say you have to work harder because you're not good enough yet so it's always looking at what they have not done well now if we look at God's law we will say well we we are never perfect we can never be perfect we can never do everything perfectly well and so then they will have a lot of pressure you know i want to obey but you know sinful thoughts just keep coming up so i you know i'm under pressure and they find it very difficult to obey find it difficult because they say you know i cannot fulfill god's law and then he is going to punish me he's going to uh he's not happy with me now that is not what the you know that that's not what God wants what God wants is even when we do a little thing for God even when we have a little improvement we can thank God for that and then we'll say thank God thank God that you know I'm starting to uh, obey God and God is changing my life and I obey him and he's happy with me at the same time we take care of our sins so that way whenever we do anything obeying God then we are happy because we know that God is happy so the point is God is happy with whatever little thing we do for God so God is happy that is our motivation at the same time we realize sin is destructive so whenever we have any sin we take care of that now when we cannot take care of that totally uh, take care of our sins totally then we say Lord help me but we are moving forward striving to obey God and then God is still happy for instance sometimes some people they have depression they try to trust in God to have more peace and joy but in the process the depression the feeling of depression still come up but then they will say Lord please forgive me then and they trust that God is happy with them that way he's motivated by God's grace but if he says well, I still have this depression, thoughts of depression. So I'm, I can never be healed. Uh, I, God is not happy with me. So that is putting a lot of pressure on himself and it's criticizing himself. So instead of doing that, he can always say, I'm improving, I'm working on it. I'm trusting in God and God is happy with me. Even though I'm not perfect, I still keep trying. But I don't let the sins not taken care of we don't say well 
I keep yelling at people, I keep, I keep stay depressed, I keep uh, having sinful thoughts, you know, that's not what God wants. We want to overcome the sins. But in the process, we not, might not be perfect. We might not be obeying perfectly well, but we still work on it. And whenever we work on it, God is very happy. That's the main point. Even when we are still imperfect, that the person still sometimes has uh, sinful thoughts in his heart, but he takes care of that immediately. That he wants to take care of that immediately. That he pray to God and says, Lord, please help me. Please give me strength and, and trust that God is happy whenever he prays to him. Then, then even though he's not perfect, he can still be happy with himself. Uh, again, with the uh, example of the child that he failed in his exam. And then the, the parents say, you know, under the law, the parents would say, you're, you're doing uh, very, uh, very bad and you, you're, you have to work harder. And the child worked harder and then he passed. And then the parents would still say, well, you are not doing so well. You would still have to work on it. Now, that is true. But if it's always saying how much you have not done well. So the standard is up here, but you have, you're just down here. You're not, still not doing well. So the child work harder and then get better results. And then the parents might still say, well, you're still not very good. You're still far short of what you can do. So the child would think, well, no matter how hard I try, my parents are still not happy with me. That is under the law. It's always saying, God is not happy with me because I'm not perfect. But I'm saying, whenever we try, God is very happy. And then if we fail in anything, we immediately ask God to forgive us. Whenever we have sinful thoughts, we ask God to forgive us and take care of that. And God is very happy, even though we don't still we still don't have perfect joy now if a person has you know depression and then he trying to trust in god and put down his burdens to have more peace and joy but still you know he he has improved he has improved he he has more peace but still he is not filled with joy but god is happy that he is working on it and trusting in god and he is improving and god is happy that he is improving. That's the main point. God would not say, well, you still don't have perfect joy. I, I don't like you. That is not God. God would accept him and is happy with him. When, whenever he works on it and whenever he improves, God is very happy. So God looks at how much we improve. Now, of course, at the same time, we don't say, I, I can continue to sin. We have to say, sins are destructive. So I have to take care of my sins all the time immediately when the sinful thoughts come up in my mind and then the more we have a close relationship with God the less the sinful thoughts will appear that I have found very true for myself when I praise God all the time and I always say I'm trusting in God I'm loving God I'm obeying Him I'm serving Him and God is happy with me when I'm filled with this positive thoughts from the Bible it's all from the Bible it's not positive thoughts from the world is positive thoughts from the Bible that God is happy with me you know if a cup of cold water would please God when I trust in him I love him and obey him and serve him he is very very happy so I'm happy all the time I'm joyful all the time and I have motivation all the time and when that happens I'm filled with joy all the time and I have less sinful thoughts than before you know that the sinful thoughts appear uh, much less frequently than before actually you know just you know maybe a few times a day now sometimes we would have s feelings like oh uh, it is so hard or or oh, the people are not uh, loving God uh, enough you know sometimes we have thoughts pop up like that that is still sinful thought that when we that causes us to feel unhappy that is still sinful thoughts but immediately I would take care of that so whenever any sinful thoughts appear, I would take care of that. That way, I have much less uh, sinful thoughts in my mind. And that way, I am, you know, I have a good relationship with God and I'm happy that God is happy with me and I'm taking care of my sins. I'm not saying I'm perfect. And I'm not saying that I'm, I am, uh, you know, I, I have done perfectly well. 
uh, that you know I have achieved perfection. No, I never say that. I always admit that. Yes, I'm still a sinner. I need to trust in Jesus as my savior and as my helper. And I'm just trusting in God that He's pleased with me. I'm trusting in God's grace so that I can obey God's law. So I hope you understand this. I just have a very brief explanation of what is the balance of God's grace and law. I show the difference between God's law and His grace. God's law is it tells us what to do. And God's grace tells us what God has done to bless us. So it's, it's God's work to bless us, His blessings to us, His help to us. And then God's law tell us, the second point, God's law tell us God's judgment and punishment. The Bible does have that. that. The Bible does have judgment and punishment and discipline. The Bible does have that. And then God's grace tell us God's forgiveness and help and also that He's pleased with us. And the third point that uh, the God's law motivates by punishment, by warning. So if a person is motivated by God's law, then he's always, you know, it's always under pressure to obey. Uh, but then God's grace motivates by grace and love. God loves me. So whatever I do for him, he's very, very happy that uh, he, you know, he's pleased with, with every little thing I do for him. And then four, uh, God's law should not be the main motivation. If God's law is the main motivation, then the person is saying, oh, if I don't do well enough, then God is very unhappy and then uh, He will punish me. And, and that way it's always negative. And then God's grace should be, should be the main motivation that we should say, wow, God is helping me and God is blessing me. God is happy with me. Then we are then we are very uh, you know, positive and enjoy serving God. That's very important. Enjoy serving God. I enjoy serving God very much. You know, I have been very busy these days because there's a new ministry that is a very uh, large-scale ministry that it's opened up to me and I, I, I see that that is very, something very, very precious. So I thank God for that, for that opportunity and you know that God is happy with us and then he give us the opportunity to serve him more and uh, uh, let me share with you a uh, couple examples of this person who is in charge of a ministry that is very important and ha has very uh, crucial importance in a in a country and uh, she said one day when, when I was there, when I was about to leave, almost time to leave. And then she, she had a nap because that's her habit in the, to have a nap uh, in the early afternoon. But then when she was, you know, she was just lying down for a few minutes and then she heard God's voice telling her, get up, get up and go to t tell Pastor Yip uh, to gather the people so that Pastor Yip will give them a, uh, a, a teaching. So, wow, she was surprised, you know, that God told her to get up and then uh, that, uh, to gather the people for teaching. And then later she received the word from God again that Pastor Yip will help you accomplish this uh, ministry so that you can reach out to more people. So I'm very happy that, that God assures us of His help and arrange people so that we can serve God together, put us together so that we can serve God together. And I have been helping you and I hope that you, you would appreciate that and say that that is God's special help. So we want to obey Him and serve Him and love Him and trust in His love and help. That way we'll be enjoying ministry. Everything we do, God is very happy. Then we'll be enjoying serving God. Okay, so here, motivated by law, and motivated by grace, the difference.